Gaurav to present uh, uh, his presentation. He'll be speaking on uh, how to implant an eye, uh, an IOL in an eye with PC tear. He'll be sharing his pearls. As he's setting it up, just like to highlight that when you're trying to make a pass plana incision uh, in a PC tear eye, the eye would be very soft, okay? So just take home message would be refill the eye with viscoelastic, suture the wounds as was demonstrated by Dr. Shail. So never try to poke in with your... Uh, also forget that, you know, uh, when, uh, during this incision, we may end up causing trauma there itself. So be mindful of that. Uh, are you ready, Saru? And second important message uh, what he uh, shared with us is that, you know, uh, you don't have to have a trocar candle as well. You can very well do a conjunctable peritomy, measure 3 millimeter from the limbus, and then do your MVR blade. Uh, go in and come out. When you enter also, don't go in with your cutter on when you're going inside, I think. That has to be inside. You do an initial cutter and then you go in, and then you should see, visualize your cutter behind the poster capsule before actually start cutting. Because you, you should know where your positioning is. And obviously, uh, if you have to use the MVR bed, even if it's a 23G uh, cutter which I've used, I would still recommend it to be sutured. Because I would be soft uh, after doing vitrectomy, and there is every chance that... Hello. Uh, okay, you can start. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone, and thank you Dr. Deepak and Dr. Bharti for the invitation to speak in this course. And uh, I'll be speaking on IL after PC rupture, I think. You know, what is the most common mistake that we all do is that after PC rupture, we feel that we are operating on the same case that was presented to us. I think psychologically that is the mistake because what I found out in my earlier days, you know, when my trainee or fellows do complication, I manage it much better, better rather than when I myself get a complication. And that's because we are still in that past, you know, I am operating on a normal case. Once we have a PC rupture, just think that you are operating on a brand new case. It's not the, you know, case you started with. And then you may approach it in much better way with clearer thinking. So, uh, what is the thought process once we have a PC rupture about the IOL, uh, which IOL we are going to put and how we are going to go forward. So, we have to ask uh, ourselves two questions. Can the remaining PC support the IOL in the back? Is the anterior CCC intact? Is the sulcus intact? Are the zonules strong enough to maintain that sulcus? If either answer is yes, then we can either plan IOL in the bag or we can plan IOL in the sulcus. If the answer for both these questions is no, then we have to go for a iris fixated or SFIL. So part one, I will deal with, in case of PC rupture, how to place IOL in the bag. Now, the question is when we have the standard procedure of putting either a three-piece IOL or a, you know, PMMA IOL, which we can easily put in the sulcus, why to, you know, take all this risk and put IOL in the back? Now, sometimes we don't have, you know, better options. For example, patient has opted for a premium IOL like multifocal EDOF or a customized IOL like TORIC, then it's always better from patient point of view if we can place these IOLs because these are made only to be placed in the bag and not in the sulcus. So, we'll, let's start thinking when we can put the IL in the bag despite having a PCR. So, first thing we have to judge what is the status of anterior hyaloid and what is the status of vitreous, okay. So, sometimes there may be a PCA rupture but anterior hyaloid may be intact. In such cases, you can place the IL in the bag without, without doing much. Of course, I will show a few videos later. But whenever there is vitreous in the anterior chamber, always do anterior vitrectomy. I think already emphasized by previous uh, speakers, sometimes what we do, you know, we use maybe OVD, or, uh, you know, heavier OVD to push this vitreous just aside, place the aisle in the bag, and we feel that it's all going to be fine later. But what happens over a period, the aisle is going to get decenter, vitreous is going to prolapse, and patient is going to land up with more troubles. So don't do that. If there is vitreous, remember you have to remove it before even thinking of putting IOL. So when what is the exact requirement for IL in the bag? You know, we just need to support the haptics and the optic-haptic junction. So if you see the posterior capsule, the central part of the PC is in fact not uh, critical for IL placement. So if you have a horizontal PC rupture in the central part, you can just place the IL vertically and it's going to be stable over the long period as well. Same with vertical rupture, you can place it horizontally and it's going to be stable. What happens if there is small peripheral uh, PC rupture which is much smaller than the optic size, you can still place the IL in the bag. But if you have a large peripheral PC rupture, 
or you have a PC rupture in the periphery in the inferior part, I think the gravity and the cap with the capsular fibrosis, even if on table the IL may look center, it is going to decenter and cause problems. So in such cases, avoid putting PCIL in the bag in case of PC rupture. Now, other issues, other thing which we can do with, with large peripheral PC rupture is that we can do anti-optic capture in some limited cases. When, uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, when uh, there is a lens which you have to put, so remember there are certain lenses which are suitable for placing in the bag even when ha having a PCR, but if you have a plate haptic design or a three piece IOL, when there is a PC rupture avoid this because it is going to stretch the PC further and you may have a uh, you know extension of that PC rupture. But these kind of IOL designs are more suitable for placing in the bag despite having a PC rupture. Of course, when the first uh, conditions are met. So I just want to show you a little mistake. So here there is a PC rupture, anti-hyloid is intact. So I'm trying to make it into a posterior capsular axis. Now the most important principle while doing that is to keep the anterior chamber well maintained. Now here I'm not doing that. And what happens is that the anterior hy hyloid starts prolapsing and the vitreous gets disturbed. Now the only way to go forward is to complete the anterior vitrectomy as I said, and then only I can place the IL in the back. I could have avoided this if I, I would have maintained the anterior chamber while I was making the posterior capsular exit. Once it is done, always use 2% methyl cellulose. Don't use any other because it's easier to wash out after you put the IOL. Don't use heavy dispersive OVDs. Now, second thing what I did just now is I enlarged the incision slightly because you know after vitrectomy, eye is little hypotonus and you don't want to struggle putting your injector, okay? So slightly enlarge the incision so you can your injector can easily go in. Keep the second instrument, you can see below the optic, or get always target the direction of IL insertion at the angle of the iris and not into the sulcus or into the back, okay? Because that is to avoid sudden drop of the IL into the vitreous. So always target it towards the angle of the iris. That means you are going to try to put it in the anterior chamber first. And place, placing the Sinsky below it will help avoiding this uh, problem. Now, once it is in the anterior chamber, you can use gentle manipulation. You can use biomanual manipulations also to place these haptics into the bag so that there is no undue traction on the posterior capsule and the IL remains well stable after. And always, this is another tip. Always, I, what I do is I just wash off this 2% methyl cellulose just with jets of, you know, BSS. I generally avoid using coaxial IA or biomanual IA because when you use that, there are fluctuations in the anterior chamber. There might be again vitreous prolapse or IL may decenter. So just wash out and methyl cellulose, you know, it's very easily, uh, you know, washed out by just jets of uh, BSS. If you have access to Centurion, you can just keep 20 IOP and then do the same thing. But this still works better because when you take out IA probe, always there is a AC collapse and there will be again some issues which might be forming. So I just wash off this carefully. Now, you are not very confident of converting a PC tear, which is central, into a CCC. No problem. If the entry hyaloid is intact, then you can again do the same maneuvers very gently, place it in the bag. And as I showed, the trick here is to wash out that methyl cellulose using just jets of BSS. You may take four or five minutes to wash out all the methyl cellulose, but that works wonderfully well in these cases. Now, second part, is about placing the IL in the sulcus. Okay, so first part we just finished. Second part is where the PC, as I have shown, the first three conditions are not met and there is a large rent which is going to the periphery and I have to place the IL in the sulcus. So now I have to pre-plan whether I am going to place it in the sulcus with optic capture or without optic capture. Why it is important, you know, ultimately even if case of PC rupture, we want to give the best refractive outcome to the patient. A patient after PCR, if patient has unaided 6x6 vision, he is going to be happy. But if he has residual refractive error, he is not going to be happy. So what is the ideal you know, case where you can do optic capture? A CCC should not be more than 5.2. Ideal is 4.8. So if you have a PPC case, I always target for 4.8 millimeter central rexis. Why it is important? Because if I am not going to do optic capture, I reduce the IL power by 5%. If I am going to do optic capture, I just keep the same emetropic IL power which has to be placed with optic capture. Now certain important steps when you are going to, uh, how to achieve this optic capture, I will just fast forward it. 
Okay. So tips is use adequate insulation. I have already said open the uh, IOL in the AC. Don't try to directly put it in the sulcus. Then always push this haptics very close to the iris. So the, it's not like dialing a IOL in the bag. You when you dial this haptics, it has to actually literally touch the iris, and then you are sure that it is going to go into the sulcus and not into the bag by 